Okay, this is a message. Uh, this is a lesson for algebra two, lesson thirty, expanding binomials using Pascal's triangle. Students will expand binomials using Pascal's triangle. Um, well, we use Pascal's triangle because sometimes we have problems like this. It's a simplify, and it, you're supposed to simplify, meaning expand it. So you start off by writing x plus three times x plus 3 times x plus 3 times x plus 3 and what ends up happening is you have a lot of work because you have to distribute each of these and multiply them across as you go and it does add up to be quite a bit of work so the best thing to do is use Pascal's triangle Pascal's triangle is um, something that Pascal uh, discovered, which he, he wondered, he said, if we have a binomial that's like a plus b, and it was to the zero power, well, your answer is going to be 1. If we had uh, a plus b to the first power, well, you would have 1a plus b, which is 1a plus b, which is 1 and 1. If we had a plus b to the second power, it'd be uh, the first term would have a coefficient of 1, second term would have a coefficient of 2, third term would have a coefficient of 3, and so forth. And then he kept going, and he, he noticed a pattern. And you... You could see the pattern. It's just uh, a lot. It's what it's doing is you're adding the two numbers above to get the one that's in the middle below it. Okay, and these are all coefficients of <coughs> binomials when you multiply them across. So it'd be a good idea to pause this video and to write this down because you need this or need to know how to recreate it and use it for your homework and for tests. Okay, so it looks a little messy, sorry about that, but that's the triangle, and you can see it's a triangle if I were to draw like a line here and down this way, it's like a big triangle, so. Continuing on here, these are the steps. You should probably pause, look at the steps, and write them down. Okay, so number one. If I wanted to, mul if I wanted to multiply number one, it's very easy. You probably could do this one in your head. Um, and this is actually a, a perfect square, so it should be one of those ones that you should go quickly in. However, we could use Pascal's triangle. So we know it's squared, so our coefficients that we're going to use are 1, 2, and 1. Okay. Then we think about what's our first term. Our first term is A. Second term is B. Our first term is A. Second term is B. So what you do is you take your first term and we take the exponent of this binomial, which is going to be squared. And then we do the same term A and then put it to the first. And we're descending. So A squared, A to the first. And the last one, we leave it blank. We take the second term, which is b, put it on the end, it's b squared, and then go backwards, b squared, and b the first. And, of course, in the beginning, we leave it alone. Okay, so now we simplify. So we have 1 times a squared is going to be a squared. 2 times a to the first, b to the first is positive 2. And then... 1 times b squared is positive b squared. Okay, and that's it. We just uh, expanded a simple perfect square problem. And, of course, we didn't multiply. We multiplied individual terms out, but we didn't multiply anything else out. Now, that one you could have done in your head, but what if it's a little bit harder? What if it's like number 2? Okay. Sorry, it's a little bit cut off there. Number two, our first term is y, second term is negative two, exponent is four. We have to go to the fourth row of Pascal's triangle 
and we find the coefficients of 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1. Put those out, and you can see I spread them out across my paper or my screen. You should do the same thing, okay? Then we start with the first term, which is y, and we take the exponent y to the fourth. So we write y to the fourth here. Then we go y to the third, y squared, y to the first, and y to the zero, which is just one. So it's redundant. We don't need to put that in there. Then we take the second term, which is negative two. So we start off with negative two to the fourth negative 2 to the third, negative 2 squared, and negative 2 to the first power. And now we set them all up. So we simplify each term now. So the first one is 1 times y to the fourth, which is just y to the fourth. You don't have to leave the one there. It's kind of redundant. We do the next term. We got 4 times y cubed times negative 2. So I would start with simplifying this negative 2. The first power is negative 2 times 4 is negative 8 times y cubed is going to be negative 8 y cubed. Then we have negative 2 squared, or this next term. So we got negative 2 squared, which is 4 times 6 is positive 24 times y squared is positive 24y squared. Next one is negative 2 to the third, which is negative 8, times 4 is negative 32, times y is negative 32 y to the first. And the last term is 1 times negative 2 to the fourth. Negative 2 to the fourth is negative, let's see, 16, or positive 16. So we put positive 16 at the end. And that's it. Now, you see, on this bigger problem, we really went much more quickly than we could have by multiplying, and we saved paper. And really, there's just two steps. You set up the problem, set up the problem, and then you simplify, and that's it. The difficulty is, <coughs> excuse me, staying accurate um, and consistent with what you're doing. But this concludes the lesson for Pascal's triangle.